All right, in the continuance of the uh, of our conversation about polynomials, in this lesson we're going to look at linear factors and uh, or linear factoring anyway, and zeros. Now, when we talk about zeros, it's basically a graphical component. So you have y equals. I don't want to use the same color here. So now it's y equals. Say I have some basic version of x to the fourth, or not basic version of x to the fourth, but a version of it. Right, it does this. It seems likely. It's got one, two, three turning points, so that makes sense. My zeros would be any time that y equals zero, so anything on the x-axis. So here's a zero. Well, if it would take, here's a zero, here's a zero, here's a zero, and here's a zero. The value of this is it gives me some idea of when changes occur. Like it makes it easier to graph if I if I could find that information. I know that well it hits here and there's got to be some turning point and then it hits here again. So there has to be some change in this area, and then I can you know sort of see going back up and down and that whole thing. But in order to get to that, because we could figure some of this out algebraically uh, without having to just graph it. But to do that, we have to factor first, or the, at least understand the idea of factoring. So what we're going to do is look at this and find the factor form. Now you'll notice here there's no y equals component, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to take it as far down as I need to, and then it's it's good. Factored form is done. So the first thing that you always want to do when you have to do a factored form is find your greatest common factor. In this case, 3 goes into all of the coefficients, and x to the first power is the smallest one, so that's the thing I'm going to pull out. 3 times x. Now, when I take it out of 3x to the third, it really means I'm dividing. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And if I do my subtraction here, 3 minus 1 would be 2. So I end up with x squared. Here, I'd end up with negative 3x to the first power. And if I did it here, I'd, I'd just end up with minus 4. Uh, now I need to factor this remaining quadratic. I've got the minus 4 here, so this sign tells me that my answers are going to be different. x plus and x minus. Bring down my 3x because that's all I need. I need to do a little bit of factor tree for 4. I don't know why. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, but I've got factors of 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. I'm looking for some set that will give me a negative 3. So I have this option or this option, and obviously the one that's going to give me the negative 3 is this one. So I'm going to put the 4 behind the minus and the 1 behind the plus, and there it is in nice factored form. What that leads to is a way for me to find zeros. So I'm going to find the zeros from this setup. In fact, once I get that, I'll go back and find the zeros for the one I just found. Uh, what I'm going to do is set each one of these individually into um, uh, set them equal to zero. So I have x equals zero. So there's one of them. I'll have x plus five equals zero, and x minus eight. Because remember, now that the y is there, if I want to find a zero, I set y equal to zero, which means each one of these parts is equal to zero as well. So. I have a 0 at 0, strangely enough. I have 1 at negative 5, and I have 1 at positive 8. Now, the thing about these zeros uh, is that, or the thing that people make mistakes on, I should say, is that they get factored form and zeros confused, or solutions sometimes are called. Um, just make sure that if it's factored form, it, you go with the original sign that it would be once you factored it out. So if they want factor form, it has an x in front of it. You keep the sign that it was when you broke it down and factored it. But if you're looking for a 0, the sign changed. So it says x minus 8, but the 0 itself is uh, at uh, negative 8, or at positive 8, I'm sorry, because it was minus 8. So it has to sort of change shine signs a little bit. That's the whole point of it. Now, what else can you do with it? You can sort of uh, use it to graph the overall function, because if I go down, and I make a little graph here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'll have a 0 here, I'll have one right here, and then I'll have one here. Now I can get an idea of uh, just what values points are in between them, and then I can go ahead and uh, graph them. Before I get to that, I might want to look at end behavior. 
If I do this as a multiply, I work it out, I'll do x squared by multiplying these together, I'll end up multiplying by this, so what I'm going to end up with is something that's next to the third power, which means I'm probably going to have a couple turning points. Also, none of this ends up giving me anything, there's neither of the, none of these x's are negative, so it probably means that my a value is positive, which means that uh, if this is an odd number, it's probably going to look something like this. of some sort. I mean, it gives me some idea of where things are going. Um, but specifically, I can create additional points. All I need to do is take this information here and plug in the values. So say I wanted to plug in, I wanted to know where everything was at negative 3. So all I would do is this. What I'm doing is creating, because it's y equals, right? So all I'm going to do is plug in an x value of negative 3, and if I do all that little bit of math there, it'll be negative 3 times uh, positive 2 times um, negative 11. And I end up with a positive 66. So this thing goes way up. See, my little guess that it would just kind of went in there was a little bit delusional. It's way up here, so it's kind of doing this whole thing. Um, but hopefully at negative 1, right in here, where I would do this, it's a little bit closer. and I get positive 36. So it's coming, like I said, it's coming back down. So it's pretty dramatic. It was more dramatic than I thought. And then if I went up to positive 4 and did it, it gives me negative 144, so it goes way down before it drops back up. But the idea is, if I wanted to do all these points just by plugging them in, I could actually draw the graph. So the idea that I have endpoint information, or endpoint relationships, in behavior I should say, I have the zero value, so I know where the crosses occur, and then I get an idea, I can plug in these points, it gives me some idea of what the graph will look like, which is, you know, sort of helpful, especially if you're trying to do something that you've never seen before. You're a scientist, for instance. Now we can go backwards. If I find a polynomial, I need to find a polynomial function with zeros at negative 2, 1, and 5. So what I'm going to do is turn it into a factored form and then distribute it. But oh yeah, I just realized I forgot. I said I'd go back and, you know, go ahead and find the zero values here, like I did up here. Well, this is simple. It's the same basic stuff. I'm going to set 3x equal to 0, so I'm finding the zeros now. x plus 1 equal to 0, and x minus 4 equal to 0. x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 4, so my zeros, oh, and this is divided by 3, so x is equal to 0, um, so my zeros would be at negative 1, 0, and 4. And if I wanted for some reason to go through the process of uh, graphing it again, I'd just, you know, pick some points. I know that it's probably to the third power, and this is positive, so it probably has that same sort of this kind of feel to it again. I could find the point at one half and find out what the exact point would be in that whole thing. Uh, it's an opportunity. Now, let's get to the one I was talking about before. Find a polynomial function with zeros at negative 2, 1, and 5. What I'm going to do is convert it to factored form. So instead of x minus 2, I'm going to treat it as x plus 2. Or sorry, it's treating it like y equals negative 2. Instead of y equals 1, I just need x minus 1. So change the sign when you make it into a factor form. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of distributive. I'll do this one first, so x squared minus 1x plus 2x minus 2. And combine these terms together and end up with this. Now I'm going to multiply that by x minus 5. I'm going to change the color around a little bit to show you that I'm doing a different step. So here, x to the third, 
plus x squared minus 2x. Might be a good idea, by the way, to go ahead and put the first, uh, the exponents of 1 on there, just so you can see them. And then you do negative 5 times x squared, negative 5x, and finally, positive 10. I just need to combine any like terms. x to the third, 1 minus 5 is negative 4x squared, negative 2 minus 5 is minus 7x, plus 10. So, there's a polynomial. If I ever, I can go from one direction to the other. That's the relationship between, uh, and you might want to put y equals or f of x since it's a function, and then you have it in a nice function and factored form. So, that's pretty much it. Um, as far as this one goes, in future videos I'm going to talk about the idea of multiplicities of these zeros. So what happens if you have a zero that pops up twice and how does that change the graph? But that's enough uh, for an initial salvo into the universe of um, how it's all set up and how it looks.